All right, so today we're gonna to talk about how not to talk to sellers, and I'm gonna show you the right way to do this so that you can make big, fat, juicy wholesale checks and also have a lot of fun in the process. And this actually was inspired by uh, one of the coaching calls that we did in our Novations Wholesale Bootcamp. And I gotta tell you, I love, love, love this topic because if you've ever felt like you've been beat up uh, by a seller on the phone or you lost control or you're like, uh, 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 you know, on your back foot and you, you know, don't know what to do or say next, you're really gonna appreciate this episode. I used to struggle with the same exact thing and I hated talking to sellers. I'm actually naturally an introvert. So once I learned this stuff and, you know, one of my mentors and when I worked at Pfizer, my mentor taught me this, I'm going to teach this to you, right? And so uh, you're going to start to see yourself make a lot more money and have a lot more fun in the process. But before I jump in today's show, I'm going to play a clip from one of our recent coaching calls of someone who is absolutely crushing it in wholesaling right now. I'm going to play that clip and then I'm going to jump right into today's show. I've got one, one deal is ready to close. We've got a, got a retail buyer. They've sent over their, the realtor sent over their contract. Our buyer, our seller just finished signing. So that should close in about 20 days. And then we've got like three, four of the properties under Novation. And then we just got a commercial property under Novation as well. Ah. Uh. Awesome job. Thanks for sharing. All right. So let's jump into, again, how not to talk to sellers and also how to do it the right way to make those big, fat, juicy checks. So uh, on our coaching call, this particular uh, client was saying, hey, Todd, you know, I was talking to the seller and all of a sudden they started peppering me with questions, right? Right out of the gate. And I felt like, you know, I was on my back foot and I just didn't know how to you know, answer the questions. I lost total control. And now the seller won't return my phone call, right? Now, this could be any number of things like you, you, that you may have experienced, right? Maybe you just felt like, you know, the seller was dominating you in the conversation and they were questioning you and you felt like you had to like either defend your experience or your offer or your integrity or your profession. And, you know, one of the things that I think when we're new, or we don't have a full understanding of this. And by the way, it's even more dangerous if you're not new and you think that you know this, right? You always have to reinforce the basics here is that you never want to go into a place where you are now defending yourself or in this like presentation mode where you're like, hi, my name is Todd Toback and I've done, you know, uh, $23,000, you know, or uh, I've done a hundred deals in this market and, uh, uh, you know, I'm uh, accredited with a better business bureau and uh, look at all of my reviews and I can buy your ca house all cash um, and close in seven days with no repairs and no closing costs. And we're the best thing since sliced bread and you can trust me. Gosh, darn it. Right. <laughs> I mean, you do that and you are automatically shooting yourself in the foot because you are now chasing sellers. And they're asking a question and you are now answering that question with them having all the control, right? They are calling the shots and you're reacting. And this is the worst place to be when you're talking to a seller of a piece of property. I always say that I am never going to force a seller to do a deal with me if they don't want to, right? You never, first of all, you're never going to convince a seller who doesn't want to sell to sell. And number two is that you're never going to convince a seller that doesn't have a problem that they have a problem. And you're never going to convince a seller who doesn't think they have a problem, <laughs> but does have a problem that they do have a problem, <laughs> right? Only the seller can come to those conclusions. And so your job being a deal finder is to number one is to find the people who have the pro a problem or a perceived problem as fast as humanly possible. And then to help the people who are eventually going to sell their house to you for a discount to get to that decision faster. I never, ever, ever say that you're going to convince anyone to do anything. You're only, only going to help them uncover, okay, their own reality. So you do that by asking the right questions and controlling the conversation. And so you can see right here that my coaching client right here, they lost control of the conversation. The seller started peppering them with questions. They started trying to answer them in the best of their ability, right? But at the end of the day, 
right? The seller steamrolled them, boom, and they lost control. And now the seller won't return their call. So our job on this phone call is to find out if a seller is motivated or unmotivated. And the way that you do that is by asking the right questions. And I do that with the technique called the redirect. Okay, so the redirect is a topic that I talk about a lot in my No Limit Selling System. I've also talked about it on the podcast. But the redirect is basically a way to gain, regain control of the conversation where a seller is asking the questions, right? When the seller is asking the questions, then you start doing the talking. And that's not a place where you want to be. You want to be asking the questions and then have the seller, okay, then start doing the talking. Because if you're doing the talking, you're not getting valuable information. And now you don't know if you have a seller who's motivated or unmotivated. And now you don't know where to spend your time. So the redirect is a way when a seller asks a question, what you do specifically is now you ask a question in response to that question, now regaining control of that question. So for example, let's say you call the seller and the seller says, how much can you give me for the property? And this is like one of the first questions. And they're like, uh, 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 well, I could give you, uh, $320,000 right? And by the way, I've seen many wholesalers or investors, whenever a seller comes in and says, how much can you give me for the property? And then they start answering that. First of all, their confidence gets shot in the moment and they give them way too high of a price, <laughs> right? Which is not where we want to be. We're now to regain control and redirect. You could say, hey, you know what? I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. I have to ask you a few more questions to see if this is a property that I'm even interested in. And then once I know more, okay, we can chat more about a price. Does that sound fair? Yes. Okay. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions? They say, sure. Now I've got the seller under control, right? I put a, I put a stop to their bulldozing. I asked permission to ask questions. They said, yes, great. Can you tell me a little bit about the property? Can you tell me about the situation? Why are you selling, right? <clears throat> if you and I don't do business, what's your plan? And so now all of a sudden I'm asking the questions they're doing the talking, I'm gathering intelligence, and now I've got all the control. Oh, feels so good. <laughs> Man, versus the other way around where you're like, oh, oh, I guess I could give you 350, and they go, no, click. So you want to use the redirect. Another scenario, would they'd be like, well, um, uh, how long have you been in business, right? And they could say, that's a great question right? I've been in business for 12 months. By the way, is there a particular reason why you asked me that, right? So you see how I made a quick answer, but then I said, hey, do you mind if I asked why you asked me that? And now they could say, well, I got to make sure that you can buy my house. Okay. Well, what would give you full confidence that I could buy your house? By the way, I'm not hundred percent sure I want to buy this house yet, <laughs> right? See, now I pull away a little reluctant, mix that in, right? But I'm not even hundred percent sure I want to buy that, your house, but, but if I could, and if we came together on price, what would make you more comfortable? I said, well, you could send me proof of funds. Okay, what else? Well, I'd have to get to know you better. Okay, I write that down. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, what else? Right? And so you could start to write down these objections and gain control. Okay, do that again. They might say, well, um, you know, uh, uh, can you buy my house as is? Right. And you might say, yeah, I can buy your house as is and close in seven days. Well, you can, you know, I, I would make sure that I redirect that. So I might say, well, we buy a lot, a lot of houses as is, and I might be able to buy this one as is. Can you tell me why that's important to you? You see how now I redirect that. Well, the place is a mess and my sister and my brother, you know, they're just pigsties and they're just accumulating stuff more and more and more and more and more. And, and I just, oh, it's just overwhelming. Now you're building rapport. So if you just start answering questions, you also lose the ability to, to gain rapport. If you start asking questions, when they ask questions and do it in a way that's not, you know, rude or, or condescending, now you start to build a bond and you slow down the conversation and you sound reluctant and they start chasing you versus the other way around. Now, do these techniques always work? No, but they work like 80 to 90% of the time, right? And so you want to use a combination of these. Now, 
You may still do this and the seller may be motivated and they may not return your call. And that's another issue, right? So one of the things I'll just say, just for example, if the seller's not returning my call, I'll say, hey, Mr. Seller, I've called you three times and haven't gotten a return back, a call back, right? Should I assume that you're no longer interested? Do a little pull away and ask a question, but I'm not scared of the answer, right? You want to be very, very direct, but kind, polite, but firm. You want to appear strong, right? Jordan Peterson says, hey, you want to be like a monster, but have it under control, right? You want to look confident and strong, but reluctant and kind, right? You're not going to, you're not going to, um, you know, force anyone to do anything against their will, right? You're direct, you're honest, but you're not going to do a deal unless you can make a profit on, on your terms, right? And so either they could choose to do business with you or not. You see how this attitude changes, right? Now it's important to follow up, right? If you lost the seller, follow up one, two, three, four times, right? But don't chase and always, always, always pull away. Now, most importantly, out of all this, I'm going to tell you, you got to be generating more leads, right? Because if you're generating more leads, you're not going to be chasing sellers. Your confidence is going to be through the roof. And if this one doesn't work out, well, guess what? Next. And that's going to be the most important factor here. All right. So let me re reiterate. By the way, I talk about this and do in-depth training on five complete techniques, right? That we use for the No Limit Selling System inside my organization that we use. Stuff that we role play with all the time. Go ahead and check out nolimitsalesystem.com forward slash backdoor if you want to buy that. Super, super cheap. All right. I'll reiterate here. Um, number one is if the seller starts peppering you, peppering you with questions like this coaching client did and you lost control, maybe they won't give you a call back or, you know, you're like, uh, I don't know where to go next. Right. Well, remember your goal of that first conversation is to find out if they are motivated or not. Right. And so the only way that you can do that is by asking questions. So don't just go into presentation mode by answering all the seller's questions. You want to use the redirect. So you want to be answering questions with questions, right? If they start nailing you with questions, come back with them to questions so you can regain control. The seller should be chasing you, not the other way around. If the seller is still not returning your call. If they just ghost you. That's another issue. But you can also just pull away on the phone call and say, Mr. Seller, you know, I've called you three times. It sounds like you're no longer interested, right? Should I stop calling you or am I correct, right? Get an answer. It's not okay. It's okay to hear no. I'm, it's, it's okay to find out that they're no longer interested, right? Don't be scared of the answer. Now, it is okay to follow up, right? You don't want to be chasing them like a bandit, but always pull away, right? Give them an out, right? But the biggest thing I'm going to tell you also is generate more leads, all right? That's going to give you a lot of confidence because if you only have like one lead and you try some of these techniques, it's going to be a lot harder for you to take that mental risk. <laughs> now, I still want you to take that risk if you have one lead, but generate more leads month after month after month. If you want to know more about the training again, that we do with our own sales reps, if you want to lock up bigger deals, bigger spreads, compress those timelines, and most of all, have a ton of fun while you're making a ton of money. Check out the No Limit Selling System. That's nolimitsalesystem.com forward slash backdoor if you want to buy it direct. And I will talk to you on the next episode.